the the theme that I keep hearing in my head, and it it sounds a little bit like what I say to young people today often, um, is I would tell myself to worry less. Um, you know, I'm a tape type A person, like many of the people that I meet in science, um, who are uh, very ambitious as I was, um, and I guess am, but I, I really had that sense of um, urgency and um, concern that if I didn't go, you know, 150 miles an hour, I wouldn't accomplish my dreams. Um, and I would tell my younger self to worry less and, um, you know, realize that you can do what you can do to make your career and your dreams come true. But there are many, many things that are out of your control. And the world will present itself to you with many twists and turns and things that you never expected. And you want to be ready for those opportunities and to be open to maybe pivoting or moving in a direction that you didn't think that you would move toward. Um, and by being open and worrying less then maybe you're going to be better able or, um, you know, you can, you can see where the real um, most exciting opportunities lie. <music> Uh, as I mentioned uh, often, um, I grew up in a small town. I went to a medical school that was um, really created to um, train uh, primary care physicians. Um, this was not a place that was focused on research. Northeastern Ohio University's College of Medicine, or it's now called Neomed. Um, and yet uh, I realized pretty early that I loved research and I wanted to uh, to take a deep dive into all these questions that were unanswered. So the most important turning point in my career uh, was the, um, uh, the uh, ability to train at the NIH. And um, I always have an amazingly warm spot in my heart because NIH gave me a chance. Um, I wasn't, I think, your typical... Uh, applicant uh, in terms of my pedigree, as as you might describe it, um, I I had done well, but I hadn't I didn't have any kind of a track record in research when I entered my fellowship at really at the age of twenty nine, um, but I had a lot of uh, commitment and some good ideas. So NIH gave me a chance, and that was I think um, number one, um, so critical. Number two, um, as I as I you know sort of dug deep and did my postdoctoral work at NIH and and learned how to become a scientist, all of that would have been fine. But had there not been an opportunity for um, an independent position and leadership at the NIH, um, I very likely would have gone on to a position that wasn't a strictly research focused. So there was an opportunity that presented itself when there was a leadership change at NIH. And so this was one of those things, it was just chance. Um, and um, during that time, I was able to set up my own lab and get a tenure track position. And then, um, you know, uh, a few years later, there was another leadership change and I was able to uh, be appointed as uh, chief of the pediatric oncology branch. And I think back at those um, inflection points in my career, and the truth is that um, there was some luck involved. Um, but I always, um, when I hear people say that about their career, I always come back to them and say, yes, there was some luck, but luck is when, you know, the old adage, luck is when preparation meets opportunity. Um, and that's what you want to do. You want to be working as hard as you can and um, creating the best, you know, um, uh, your best self so that but when those opportunities present themselves, you are um, able to take advantage. Um, so those I think were my most important inflection points. And then in 2016, I was recruited to Stanford, which has given me a whole um, new opportunity to um, really craft my career 
um, in some different ways, um, uh, more technology-based by playing to the strengths of your institution um, and more entrepreneurial uh, by spinning out um, companies. And so um, you always got to keep reinventing yourself and keep uh, changing and learning in this business. And my recent relocation to Stanford has allowed me to do that. Being elected as a member of the Academy is uh, an amazing honor because the advances that we're seeing in cancer immunotherapy are the result of so many hundreds of amazing, thousands of amazing scientists through the years. And to be recognized on, on a short list of, of folks who have contributed um, in a very substantial way is, um, is, is a deep honor. And to be recognized by your colleagues and your peers is always the best. So thank you very much. <laughs>